This is GitLab Plugin Modernization. It's the 11th of August. Um, Harsh, I think the topics we've got for today include interactive testing, code review and feedback, and the GSOC 2023 project branch, which I think means let's talk about milestone two status, milestone three status, milestone four status and it, it's perfectly fine if we say some of them are nope no nothing further to do at this point or etc five status what other topics would you like on the agenda like yeah i'll discuss upon all those four milestones and like what you have ticked the interactive testing of milestone two so have you completed all of the things that i said in the same point there? I have completed several, but not all. So interactive testing okay. of milestone two. So, so still in progress. Uh, more progress today, today and tomorrow. So the progress, so like, thus, go ahead. Yeah, so how it went, like other than this like auto merge, was anything else broken, not working? No, 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 uh, no other problems. So no issues detected except uh and this one may just be me making a configuration error except auto merge uh did not happen on six on ci job success and the reason seemed to be that ci job success was not notified to gitlab.com and i don't i so part of me says that's probably because i made a configuration error like uh, uh, in the post build actions, you set uh, this thing, right? Yeah. Well, so let's. Are you okay if we take a minute to look at it now? Yeah. Like in the Gitter channel, I I actually I think I mentioned a line from the readme file about that, like about the post build action to actually um, accept the merge request on finishing up of the job. So okay. So let's let's production. look at my job definition because maybe that's the entire gap. I thought I had added publish. Oh, so I had added publish build status to GitLab. Yeah. So you have to add the post build actions. Uh, so there's an additional action that I need to add. Okay. Which is. Yeah. I think. Uh, except except GitLab. GitLab. Okay. All right. All right. Good. So, so we may have the privilege and I'm going to ask it to delete the source branch even better. Yeah. Save it now. Yeah. Okay. So now what you where, are you okay if I do this test live? Yeah, yeah, fine. Okay, cool. All right, so let's go here and we're going to find tasks. We'll pick another one and then rewrite the URL because that's easier for me. Okay, so here we have merge requests to open. This one is the one that is on branch E. So remember new branch E. So let's look at this build it built on let's make this text readable it built on new branch e so that's a good all right but the build is successful but it hasn't merged it says pipeline is pending so i think what you're telling me is if i do a build now and i yeah. should have configured it to take less time hang on just a minute this will run, but it's got a sleep in it that's seven seconds long because I was making wild guesses about what might be causing the problem. Let's delete this sleep step while we're waiting. And now let's check ready to merge. Okay, I've approved it. Pipeline is still pending. Here is the build and it built that and doesn't seem to have notified or maybe the notice needs to arrive maybe we need some time before it arrives okay so still yet. now now one thing i could do here is i could say cancel this pipeline and do another change to see if maybe um yeah before that can you show me your uh, like post build actions thing again sure you bet so configure here all right and so here we have accept the merge request now i had yeah. clicked delete source branch okay so are there other the post build that, actions that, that i need to add no no 
So this is the job that you're running, right? Like the job you're configuring is the, is the job that you're running. It is. That's correct. Then it should be working. If it's not well, uh, so so let's let's try a different experiment. Just just an let's start it by a push from GitLab. So I'm going to go back okay. here to the to that branch to the merge request, and I'm going to make an edit in the file. Now I've got to remember how to and do. One more oh, thing, oh, look, like, uh, look, set to auto merge is is not. Well, let's clicked. let's make a change first. So here we go. Changes, edit. Okay. How do I make this edit? Now I have to navigate. I remember how the navigation works. So it is commits. I no, would I like. On the commit. So if I click on the most recent commit here, and then will it give me an editor here? No. Edit in single file editor. That's what we needed. Okay. So this has some junk times in it that can be deleted. Okay. Remove a few timestamps. And it's committing to new branch E commit changes. Okay, so this, this is fun because now what we're going to see is here it's already entered pending. So the job correctly started based on that change. And if we look at the changes here, it will tell us, hey, remove a few timestamps. So that that is what I expected. And the job succeeded and took one and a half seconds. Now let's go back here. Look at this. It is approved. But still the pipeline shows as pending. But as like, though uh, it, you have not clicked the set to auto merge option, right? I, I did not. That's correct. But the pipeline being pending has me perplexed here, right? It, it should have noted that the pipeline is finished because this job has finished. It was started by a GitLab push by Mark Waite. And let's double check. Maybe I've got duplicates in there and that's 151. No, not even duplicates. So it's just that push that I did from the their UI, from the GitLab UI, did cause the job to run. But somehow or other, it's as though the notification is not coming back that the pipeline was successful. Now, is there an additional action I need to add? Uh, is there something else I need to do inside the job itself to notify? One thing, like... Uh... The job and the pipeline are the same things, right? If I'm not getting confused or something. That That's my understanding. I think when over here, when GitLab calls this thing a pipeline, they're talking about any CI or CD job that yeah. runs. That that was my assumption. Yeah. Now, I, that's, I could be wrong. I, it may be that what I need to really use is a, a, a true Jenkins scripted pipeline but their document so. yeah their documentation said hey you 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 they actually recommend freestyle which is what this particular job that i'm using is yeah. now now should are there maybe there's some setting that i'm doing wrong here let's take a look at it ignore work in progress merge request okay is this a work in progress it is not okay um the in like can you go to the pipeline again to so this thing yeah there is a job section also is that something different oh oh good question i don't know let's see so here is this job i don't know that links to the same thing okay so good good, like, good question uh, though like job in the left in the leftmost side be, uh, below the pipeline in the there. left yeah okay that what's that See, this, this, as far as I understand it, is for GitLab CI CD. So I don't think this is what, what I want. Okay. I don't want to use their CI CD. I want to use Jenkins as the CI CD. Okay, so their CI CD, they are calling it jobs, and other CI CDs, they are calling pipeline. Okay. I think so. I, well, and I suspect if I defined a job here, I think it would even appear in the pipelines tab. 
but but for them pipeline is any ci cd jobs is their specific ci cd implemented with gitlab uh, i think like i test I, I saw the code and i don't think so there is any problem in it like there was one problem that chris identified about the like type changes i mistyped it from small b to capital b that's what i had to do but like other than this i don't think so there is oh, wait a sec oh you may have just said it you may have just said something i did change this build name from lowercase from uppercase jenkins to lowercase <laughs> jenkins shall we try it you you said something yeah. about uppercase versus lowercase should we try this yeah i mean Maybe, i don't think right. it does us any harm even yeah. if we okay so let's let's try that and now i'm going to make another change again from Okay, so if we look at the commits and we click here, no, click here, and then we do edit single file. Okay, this time we need to delete something that we'll never care about, like, How do I get there to delete it? We're going to delete one line from the stack trace. Now I challenge you to tell me after the fact, without doing code change, without doing diff, which which line did I delete? Because of course you remember every one of those lines from the stack trace in the document. Okay. All right. So here we go now. Commit that change. Okay, so we should now see here on this job, there it is, started by GitLab push. Let's look to see which change it was that did it. Delete a line from the stack trace. So that's doing what we hoped. So GitLab triggered Jenkins. And now, oh, maybe we should look at console output. Is there anything here? Okay, there isn't anything here that tells us but let's look here, merge requests. No, it's still not, okay, it's not set to auto merge. I'm gonna set it to auto merge, but it still says the pipeline is pending. So I think may just need more investigation for me to, to decode what is it that's going on because I expected that to do the auto merge or look in the bugs. Maybe this is a known bug that somebody else has already seen. One more thing that I like, one, one more thing that can happen is there is a problem in merge request state that like what we did at that time for fixing the merge request was to put it to all and we didn't use opened, updated and all those merge request states that were available in the plugin, but they are not available in the GitLab or J. So we did that with the merge request state. Maybe that's causing the Maybe. problem of pending and stuff because like it's opened and it's reopened and it's a different thing. It's updated the merge request and it's a different thing. Updating a merge request is, di uh, is different than opening the merge request. So maybe that's why it's not able to get into the correct action of doing it. So that's also- uh, Okay, so so there the concept is in 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 the rest easy, rest easy version, we, we had, we have a different mapping, we have a different set of enumerations we're using than we do in GitLab for J because GitLab for J doesn't provide all the same mapping, all the same enumerations. Okay, good. That's something I could check because it it may be that what we're seeing here is this this failure to notify about pending state might be that GitLab is ignoring whatever we're we're sending to it and saying, I don't know what that means for a pipeline. Now, is there a way with GitLab for me to see their their um, web requests that have come in? I'm so I'm not skilled. One, yeah, for for doing that, you have to tunnel it. Like maybe you can use an NGROC ah. to tunnel all those requests. Okay, right. So, those, uh, so I need to put some intermediary in there that will let me watch the the exchange. That's yeah. that's a separate diagnostic. Okay, good. <laughs> I used to do that for checking the API request and stuff, other than right. using curl, of course. Right. Okay, good. All right. So let's, well, so yeah, I think, 
I think. Okay, just a minute, my man. Oh, yes. Good. All right. Okay, sorry. S separate business distraction that just occurred. Got it. I'm back. So, yeah, I so go ahead. Yeah, for this, can you show me uh, like the reproduction steps for this issue so that I could debug and see like what, what the hell is going wrong here? Yeah, well, and so are the steps that I've taken so far that'll be in the recording good enough or would you like to see them again? What what would you like to see? I'm happy to try to show them again. Like uh, how did you enable, uh, like, like I'm not getting that set to um, auto merge option in the pipeline. So what oh. did you do? Oh, okay. All right. That's, and, and I'm not sure what I did. So let's look at that to see. Okay. So, so I think you're, so what you're saying is you don't even see an option in, in your merge request that allows you to enable auto merge Yeah. this, this thing. Okay. Which I think is some sort of a settings down here. So let's, let's look settings, merge requests. Okay, merge commit automatic squash allow merge checks. Okay, wait a sec. Where is auto merge? Auto like okay. I um, I linked a GitLab's documentation for that, and I followed all those steps which GitLab told me to do, but I couldn't see it. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let well let me and I'm I am not sure what I did. So let's let's look at it and see. So this says, okay, so yep, if you review a merge request and it's ready to merge, but the pipeline hasn't completed yet, you can set it to auto merge. Oh, oh, maybe that's maybe maybe the reason you don't see it is your pipelines are completing and mine aren't. Maybe so in your no, installation, no. Yeah, yeah, that that could be an issue. Like, I'll have to make the thing longer, I guess. Well, so let's let's check it. So if I if I, for instance, make this thing run for forty five seconds, right? Let's put a sleep in. Even better, let's sleep for ninety. So we're going to sleep for a, a, a one and a half minutes. So that will guarantee that it's it's not going to complete and we'll have enough time to watch it. So now if we say tasks, merge requests. Okay, so, and this time just for fun, I'm going to change branches. No, no, let's stay on the same branch. Excuse me, Some, uh, terrible tester doing terrible testing things. Let's stay on one branch. Okay, so. Here we go. Delete, delete a line from the stack trace. We're going to delete another line from the stack trace. Okay. Delete three lines from the stack trace. Okay. Commit those changes. All right, so what, 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 what? Okay, I thought that I overview, commits nine, delete three lines. Okay, there is the commit. And the diff shows correctly, three lines deleted. And now here we are running. And it's running, it will be running for at least 90 seconds. So if we look here, we should see the pipeline is pending and it's no longer got the auto merge thing. Interesting. It's just got a merge button, not even an auto merge because it's checking pipeline status. But, oh, now that's, that's exactly what happens with me. Well, and, and so the, the challenge here is this is reporting check line pipe, checking pipeline status, I suspect, while the pipeline is running. When the yeah. pipeline finishes, it, it switches to pending instead of switching yeah. to, to done, where in your case, it's probably switching to done. Yeah, it's actually switching to done. And then I'm getting a directly to merge. I'm not getting that auto merge, which you are getting. So Right, which, which, which makes sense then. It probably means I've got some configuration error 
either a a a web hook that's defined wrong or a, a a string that's defined wrong that's causing this thing to to when the job finishes so we are at now one minute for we're about 15 seconds away from this finishing so in about 15 seconds this thing will switch from checking pipeline status to to pending rather than finished let's see yeah, right. Now, now the, the proof will be in. Okay, so now the job has finished. Still checking pipeline status. Okay, maybe not. Maybe. Oh, oh, wait a sec. But back to back to maybe maybe I've made the maybe I've caused a different mistake by changing it from uppercase Jenkins or from lowercase Jenkins to uppercase. Maybe I really did break it. That's why interactive testing is hard. Uh, well, that's why interact interactive testing is like real human beings use things. So okay, so let's this one has uppercase. This one still keeps forgetting delete source branch. That's interesting. It just doesn't remember that. Okay, that's a bug, but that's a, a different bug. And that has nothing to do with your changes as far as I know. Okay, so let's go back here and check again. It's still checking pipeline status. So I'm going to change this from uppercase Jenkins back to lowercase Jenkins and save it. And we're going to do another, another, another build. We're going to add another commit and run, run another build. Commits. Sorry, Harsh. Do we need to stop here? Have I taken more of your time than no, you can no, afford no, no, right no. now? I, I am free. I am free. Don't worry. Okay. All right. Great. I mean, for me, what this testing is telling me is the code's actually in quite good shape right this is this says the code yeah. is actually well very well behaved and we're just trying to diagnose a surprise and it's always good to diagnose surprises but i'm not terribly worried about this particular surprise so remove i think it was about six lines even more lines roughly six okay so committing the change All right, now if I look from this tab here on the merge request, it shows, oh, now it's, wait a sec. Now it says pipeline pen, oh, 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 lower, uppercase Jenkins becoming lowercase Jenkins seems to have changed the behavior, right? Here it was lowercase Jenkins before, it was uppercase Jenkins before, and it would not show the status at all. Now it reports the status. Okay, so what this really tells me is I probably need to reconstruct this scenario from the very beginning and be sure that I get all the names correct in all the right places. Because what we're seeing is, okay, there's a different behavior. The job has now finished, right? And it built... Let's see what the changes were. It says remove even more lines. So that's the correct change. And there's no failure. And we see that this is now ready to merge. And I could set it to auto merge, but it won't auto merge because the pipeline is still pending. And it's probably pending because I've got some configuration error. Okay, let's, I propose we pause this discussion. We've probably got about as much from this as we can. And let's let you talk about the other milestones. Like before that, I think there is one more issue. Like okay. the pipeline is setting up, like the pipeline is setting up to pending, but like what 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 should be happening is you set it to merge, like let you set it to auto merge, and then the pipeline is to pending, and then it succeeds. What's happening is you are not setting it to like auto merge, but the pipeline is pending. Then you click on the auto merge, then you want it to succeed. I think the flow is not the best one. Okay, now now that part I'm not sure I understand. Help me talk me through that again. So you said I what I saw was it's it goes into pending 
and yeah. I'm not yet set to auto merge. Yeah. So what what should be happening is you you have to set it to auto merge, and then it will go. It, it's in the process of it being pending, and then it should be like a successful the job is successful, and it gets to the GitLab. So set to the auto merge. I I think you are you are not setting it to auto merge before the thing goes to pending for some reason. And 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 that part at least what I'd observed is I generally can't because what happens is I'm going to set it to auto merge now. Okay. It's set to auto merge, but as soon as I make a change, it revokes the auto merge. And, and okay, then yes, I have, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, right? yeah. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Now, now I think still let's delete, let's delete three lines. All right. <laughs> delete and the if, complete if, list. <laughs> If we hurry, if we hurry now, so we just deleted three more lines. And if we hurry now, we should be able to see this thing. It's checking pipeline status. It hasn't done the, the enable auto merge yet because this thing is still building. Okay, right. Although I think I think maybe you're you're right in terms of while pipeline status is being checked, I'd really like to be able to say auto merge. I'd like auto merge to be sticky so that when the yeah. pipeline finishes successfully, it merges. But in this case, okay, now could not retrieve uh, the pipeline status. Oh, that was interesting. And now it's checking pipeline status. Okay, so here we are. It's completed. I've obviously got some more, more testing work I need to do here, Harsh. I, clearly, there's more. It, 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 the, the behaviors are surprising, but I think with more testing and more careful configuration, I can at least understand why it's behaving the way it's behaving. Anything else on milestone two status before we let you describe the other milestones? Okay, so yeah, have you tried the permutation and combinations of like mixing pointers, which I said? I have not. Like a lot of things together. So this is mixing tests, perform mixed mode tests, mixed tests as described in the testing document in the testing earlier, in the testing outline earlier. I have not yet. I will do that though. Okay. With this, like automatch, if it does not work, like even after you completely restarted your like pipeline, if it still does not work, then maybe you can write some guidelines or like maybe I can watch the video again to, uh, to like see how to get the automatch set up right. And then I, maybe I can, I or Chris can debug like, what's wrong here because i don't i don't think i missed messed up anything else in the code base i i tested a lot of things in the code base but before telling you guys to do the interactive testing i did things on my part but of I, course but i was not able to but i was not able to get the auto merge working and some more things but i tested a lot of things before like doing that so yeah the code base was in a very healthy shape when i committed things but yeah good very well, and and congratulations on that. That's great. So, so for me, if auto merge does not work, describe more details, and I can either put them in a Google Doc. Yeah, you can obviously read Google Docs, Doc or chat, whatever. If it's if it's anything longer than a few a few phrases, I'll probably do a Google Doc as most likely location. I Good. Think like uh, before before like. Uh... In the auto merge system, maybe you can read the README also because I like the push build action that you left. It was from the README file of GitLab. Right. Package. So I think you should be reading that. Good. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Anything okay. else? Yeah. About um, let's talk about the milestone three now. So in the GSOC office hours, John Mark told me to focus on the automated tests because I was making my mentors do manual labor, which he didn't like. So I was I was trying to figure out the automated test and it's not in a good shape. Like I wrote a lot of things on the Gitter channel explaining what the hell is wrong here. 
but i think it's it's really not in a good shape and i'll i'll try fixing it but i don't have much positive hopes for that to be very honest like the tests that are not working they are due to the descriptor and the previous tests that uh, were based on the descriptor being null and still able to work actually what happened was um, due to the descriptor being null it was causing problems it was giving me extra logs of illegal argument exception and null pointer exceptions a lot um, well when i was just starting out with a code base i used to get some creepy random errors which i was not able to understand which i now understand like what the hell is wrong there so it was because the descriptor was null and i added a null check for that it was not previously in the code base but i still added it and because of adding that again tests are affected because tests want the descriptor to be null and when the descriptor but it, it somehow bypasses it in between like i think the author literally pours the testing into this system so not in the best shape i must say things are not that good with the tests i'm not talking about docker based tests right so so and and that good so you're you're looking at what do we do with the tests that are not the docker based tests and i think what you said is currently there are some tests that depend on a null descriptor and usually a null descriptor means that it's not running a jenkins rule test our a, a jenkins yeah. rule test is a is a higher level integration test where there's really something mostly Jenkins like running and and they are they are more expensive to run because they take longer to start and more work to tear down yeah. but they are also much closer to a real production environment um so so if that's one of those where you may consider the tests that depend on a null descriptor, should we just discard them and replace them with Jenkins rule tests? I mean, I, I've, I'm not sure. Like I wrote really long things on Gitter channel. Maybe you can read that. Okay. And I think I described them, but using Jenkins rule, I, yeah, that could be possible, but I'll have to see because like what I, what the author was trying to do was he was trying to use the YAML file for the GitLab configuration. And he was just like trying to compare like if the values are same or not, like he was asserting the same values or not. So yeah. Okay, but, so like, this these oh, were relatively low level, almost unit level tests, asserting very, very small kinds of things. Yeah, like Jenkins has a code configuration he was checking and it was very, very unit level. Like um, he was just checking if the connection configuration that is being set is equal to the connection configuration that is expected by the GitLab YAML file. So it's, it's very relevant. Okay, well, so, and those those kind of tests, while while they're interesting, are not, not nearly as worrisome to me for deletion as if we're deleting something that's doing a, an interesting test, right? Deciding that the YAML is correct, that that's, at least for me, I think not as valuable. Therefore, if you need to delete it and say, look, this test is not valuable. Make a comment when you delete it and in the deleting commit and say, I propose to delete this test. It's just not valuable enough. And regarding like, it's just not with this test. It's like this test was major one because it was involved with the connection test. Other tests are also failing. Like they are similar to connect because everything needs a connection to GitLab, right? So all the right. tests are almost like dependent on connection to GitLab and all of them were getting this descriptor problems and like a, GitLab API token implementation problems and all. So yeah, but ah. you, once you see once you see the Gitter channel, you you'll know what I'm talking about. I got some really crazy shit there. Okay, good. All right. So Mark review. Good. Okay. Maybe I'll tag you. I I can read through the read through the messages. Don't worry. About it. You're welcome to tag me as well. But I can read certainly read through the messages. There should be three or four, I guess. Okay, great. So that's the status of milestone three. Bad. It's not good. Okay. So coming to the milestone four, it's 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 not that bad. Like it's, so, help me with yeah. the 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 one line, the one sentence description of milestone three. This is the enable enable tests. Hang I on, enable I'll... the tests. They are blocked. Like no, 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 sorry, you, you, I'm not, I'm not being clear with my question. Just a minute, I'll, I'll get what I need by looking online. Just a second, okay. So here, 
what I'm you 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 describe the milestones in okay there we go milestone four is enabling proxy settings milestone five is improving documentation and milestone two is migrating webhook Okay, so I see those in the in the commit message in in the description of the pull request. All right, got it. They are blocked. Okay. Milestone three. Right. All right. So blocked on on yeah test barriers on tests that require a GitLab connection. Good. Okay. All right. Okay. So the milestone four, I tested quite a lot of them, except authenticated uh, like proxy servers. I was not able to test because of my Nginx thing. So I'm expecting that you guys can test using Apache or anything that you want. But yeah, other than that, the proxy was perfectly working like the way I wanted to. I checked the APIs through curl and all, and they were working the way I wanted to. So it's not a problem. And the changes in the milestone four are quite like small. So it should be easier to merge as compared to like milestone two, which is a very, very big chunky thing. And right. of course for milestone five, five, it's just documentation changes, but like it's not that big of a problem. Okay, good. All right. Authentic so authenticated proxy settings are the key thing there. Yeah, right, like the so. unauthenticated proxy settings are working. Like if you enter the wrong username or wrong password, it will uh, give you a 403 forbidden. But I'm, I, I was not able to test the authenticated one. Ah, it, ah it, right, it's because okay. Nginx proxy manager has a bug, which I shared, I think, um, yes. in, in the GitHub issue. So like that's that's what is causing the problem. And I was not able to fix it for some reason. Like, Right, authenticated proxy settings when the authentication is rejected, right? That you tested. Yeah, I, that was successful. Right, so the thing when proxy settings, when when authentic, authentication is allowed or is accepted, yeah. right? So that's yeah. the one we need to test still. Yeah, I've added a documentation like uh, in the MyStone file, the proxy server documentation is also added, so you can easily refer that. And but it's for Nginx proxy manager actually, so you'll have to actually figure it out. But okay. that has the basic guidelines on how the proxy will be acting as the middleware between those things. It should give you a good amount of conceptual clarity on what's on how I set up the reverse proxy setup here. Great, good, okay. I mean, milestone five, of course. It's like Chris has to add his documentation changes, and I thought that, that uh, like. Before, uh, like I was also contributing to to other open source projects, and when I saw like when I started to again read the code bases of different big big open source projects, I came to an understanding that I should not be lazy with documentation because because it it causes a lot of problem to newcomers actually. So I decided to uh, give a brief about all the things that are happening in a in a class so that people are easily able to understand because if if I show this like project and stuff to a third person guy who is in my institute studying computer science he'll be shocked as hell on what the guys what this guy is trying to do so it's just this right. not the most user-friendly thing good yeah i'll add a bit more documentation once chris starts also adding but it's milestone five i i should be worrying about milestone two and three first yeah well i i agreed that milestone five Milestone five is certainly less less important than the the earlier milestones, yeah. right? Those those earlier milestones are are the the real value of the project. So yeah. very good. All right, so it feels like testing interactive testing is in progress. I'll give it. I so I will drop. I will drop off and disappear beginning Monday morning my time, and won't be won't reappear again probably until next saturday or later i'm going to go into the mountains and relax yeah which mountain actually you're going to uh, it's a it's near a place called bear lake so it's oh, it's a, just a, nice. a a little lake in northern utah in terms of what you would think oh, I, I we will my wife and i will drive eight hours and meet with my brothers and their spouses and we'll have a lot of fun 
I actually saw a lot of YouTube videos on Utah. So yeah, it's actually a very beautiful <laughs> place. I, I saw cars driving and like a lot of mountains there. So yeah, it's actually yep. a very beautiful place. All right. Any other things we need to cover? Yeah. So like some, some, some general things like what's happening. So my academic workload has increased. And I'm uh, like, uh, I, I also wanted to ask like this, the Google Summer of Code will be ending, like the coding phase will be ending till 28th. So I am skeptical about it that I'll be able to fix that all those tests till the 28th. So what do you mm -hmm. think about it? Because I am quite, even if I fix a lot of tests, I think some of them will be like left. Like yeah, especially I... the action resolver, because like it is absolutely difficult to like test action resolver. It's that bad. I, and, and I understand. And I think that's, that's okay. You have we 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 can never guarantee ultimate success of every change we start in the project. That is not a problem. I think you've done a great job of on your efforts. I think the progress you can make is greatly appreciated, and we just keep going. So the end of the project, August twenty eighth, does not end the interaction in the code base with. Chris and me and eventually with Basel and others. So, so I think you're just fine. If some of the tests aren't passing at the end, we declare they're not passing. Here's where we're at. I, I don't think there's any shame in that. I think you've done an excellent job of getting us this far. And we would love to, if we possibly can, push it all the way before the end of the project so that it's at least merged to the project branch. But let's let's keep working on it and see. Yeah, that's fine. And one more thing, like uh, before, like the uh, the GSOC will be completed till twenty. The coding phase will be completed, and the complete GSOC will be till I think like mid of September or like something like that. I like the end term presentation, right? So Here, before that, can yes. I, Go ahead. Yeah. So before that, can I? Because I am getting an opportunity to like apply to Linux Foundation mentorship. So can I apply into that? Because like I'm getting the opportunity. And it's yes. a fall term. I won't be able to get the opportunity to apply in the spring term and all because I'll be having all uh, like all of my exams in there and I have some other plans for that. So I'll be kind of messed up. So I'll have to distribute my time a bit, not much time, but yeah, a bit of time to that also. Well, just, well, just for so awareness that you guys know. No problem. The reality so final week of standard coding ends August 28th. So so you are you your your responsibility to the project ends August 28th in terms of coding. I believe there's an expectation that you'll do a final evaluation yeah. yourself and then sometime in September, a 15 minute present a demonstration during the online meetup. So at once and we're at the, August 28th, your time commitment is very small. Yeah, and the Linux Foundation mentorship starts from, I think third or fifth September. So I think <laughs> I should be fine if I do that. Okay. Yeah. If, if, yeah, good luck. Like, because I was kind of managing my time that I remember I said that because I started contributing to different code base, I, I really got shocked. Like, Oh, it is difficult. But when you know the code base, it's not difficult. So I was, I was contributing to Thanos. It's a very, like it's a CNCF project and it's a very Prometheus and Thanos. It's a very mm -hmm. good project. And I did some two, three PRs on that, like around 400, 500 lines. And I think it's going positively, but yeah, it was. And the first time you see a code base, it's difficult. So that's why I thought maybe I should describe the code base. Great, very good. Good, all right. Any other topics we need to discuss? Yeah, like after the GSOC ends, I, I think I'll still be there with the community because like till the like GitLab plugin gets stabilized a bit, not that till it gets into the production, right? So I think I'll I'll stay there for a bit more. And if I think after that the community should not need me much. So yeah, I'll be I'll be fine after that. Well, and you are welcome to continue as long as you're interested in the community. We would love to have you, but I also understand you've got a university degree to work on. You've got other things you need to do, and that's that's perfectly fair. 
No, like I was like, what will I do? Like if, if the plugin ends, like um, the project ends, what will I do in the community? That's the that's the more better question that I have. Interest up uh, like upon interest, Jenkins and Cloud Bees are like they're very uh, major communities, right? It's a very, very big community. And there are a lot of things to discover, like what's happening in the UI UX side, what's happening in the infra side, and there's a lot of things to discover. So it's not about the interest, it's about what will I do. Oh, I can I can give you that's a that that's a there are there are so many things that you choose where you're interested and there's work to do there. If you'd like to learn more about Git, there's lots to learn there. If you'd like to learn more about about test automation, lots to learn there. If you'd like to learn more about UI UI technologies and how do we deal with user interfaces in a project as mature as as Jenkins is, lots to learn there. So you you pick any area of interest and I'm confident we can find a way to apply your interest into the Jenkins project. I'm, I'm confident of it. There are so many things we have to do. Uh, like, I actually wanted to see how big open source projects actually work because I tried some open source projects which are small, like one the, the ones I'm contributing, they are also really, really big. Like Prometheus, everybody knows it. it right. It's the star of monitoring and observability everywhere. Mm -hmm. So yeah. It's just fun getting involved in open source. And I think I will regret not doing data structures and algorithms good. <laughs> that's... And, and that's okay. You learn something there. Maybe data structures and algorithms is a very useful course. Good. That's great. Yeah. Just yeah, truly, okay. if, if you're interested in Hacktoberfest, for instance, so beginning October 1, we'll have a 31 day event in the Jenkins project where you could have an opportunity to act more as a mentor then as a as a coder, if you'd like to try a mentoring experience, Hacktoberfest, October 1 to October 31, will be something like that. And, and so there are all sorts of opportunities to help. Yeah, you're actually right about it. Like mentorship is also a good thing, right? Like these are contributors also become mentors, like, like Chris, Chris did the same thing, right? Exactly, right. And and okay. that's, that's what uh, that's what Diraj Joda did. Diraj Singh Joda did the same thing. He he was a mentored student last year, and this year he's acted as a mentor, a mentored contributor. And this year he's acted as a mentor, and and oh. it's it's a good thing to it's a good thing for you also professionally because eventually you'll be get into a career where you'll probably end up mentoring other people and practicing how to mentor is a good is a good thing to learn how to do. Okay, right. That like maybe into some like Kubernetes project or some more difficult projects. I I I will move out from the GitLab plugin because if I do GitLab plugin for a long amount of time, I'll get bored, and that's right. just not the thing which I want. Uh, and and, and that probably. and that's a good a good approach. It's you want to choose something that is interesting to you, and whatever the, it, it may be. I'm interested in Java twenty one. I'm interested in. Uh, JavaScript frameworks. I'm interested. Whatever things you find interesting, th then I suspect we can find ways to to meet your interest in the Jenkins project because it's so broad and so deep. There's so many things happening in it. Yeah, I'll try that. I'll try that. I'll remember. All right. Anything else, Harsh? Before we end for today? Nope. I think it's fine. All right. <laughs>